The video of today is brought to you by gvgmall.com. Get your authorized Windows 10 Home Edition serial key for only $13. You can go even further and use my discount code to get 20% discount, making it only $11. The same applies to Office 2019 that you can get for the awesome price of $50. Hello guys, it's Shit Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and today we have a video of DDR4 frequencies on Ryzen 5 2400G APU using the integrated graphics. Okay, I made before a video like this but it was something like 2133 versus 2400 versus uh, 3000 versus 3200 MHz. So now we don't have the 2133, we don't have the 24 MHz, 2400 MHz, sorry. Uh, but we do have one more higher speed, in this case 3400 MHz. And that's why I'm making this video and also because it is 2019. And I want to show people that own the Ryzen 5 2400G and are using integrated graphics, I want to show them the importance um, of the speeds on the... Um, the fucking shit. <laughs> Basically, I want to show you the difference it makes by overclocking your RAM or having higher frequency RAMs while using the integrated GPU. And well, there's not much more to say and this is it for today. Don't forget, hit like, subscribe, share the video because it matters a lot to me, it helps a lot the channel and myself, which is the channel basically. Um, and that helps a lot, so don't forget to do it. Also, leave a comment on the comment section and let's go to the part you really want to see. The benchmarks. See you in the conclusion. The first game of today is the well-known GTA 5. As you can see, the tests were done at 720p and 1080p, being 720p obviously the most playable. These results are also influenced by the loading parts in black, reaching above 200 FPS, hence the high average FPS numbers you see. As for the RAM speeds, we can see that 2933 MHz is clearly the sweet spot here, giving a nice advantage over 2666 MHz. At 720p, the difference in average FPS from 3200 MHz to 3400 MHz is almost null. But we do have a 7 FPS increase in the 1% lows, making it 59 FPS. The higher the 1% lows, the smoother the gameplay, and having 60 FPS there is, in my opinion, a must. The second game is Need for Speed Payback, in the hyperspace circuit. At 720p we can see a decent FPS scaling, being the difference from 2666 to 2933 MHz, 10 FPS in average. It is not a game changer of course, but being able to play at least at 60 FPS is really really good for an APU like this one. Now with the beloved PUBG. 
PUBG was really really bad in early times, where an RX 480 would struggle to achieve 60 FPS at 1080p very low. But the developers really overcame those issues. The replay feature though is still not that good, and that can be seen on the 1% lows which are all over the place. Still, you can base yourself on the average FPS which will point out the reality. Once again, in general, higher RAM frequency is better, of course. At 720p we have the same average FPS with 3200 MHz and 3400 MHz, but the 1% lows with 3400 MHz are considerably higher. Although, anything higher than 2933 MHz is not worthy unless really cheap. Now, using the Rainbow Six Benchmark tool. Rainbow Six games are known well to like AMD GPUs and high bandwidth numbers, and the bandwidth of the inbuilt graphics of Vega 11 will raise once the memory frequency is also raised. That is why the difference between 2666 and 2933 MHz is again the bigger one. After 2933 MHz, the difference starts getting smaller, even more at 1080p. Higher frequencies are better always, just not worth the extra price. Did you know they eat the living as well? No, really upset him too. His theory collapsed. War is not exactly going our way. We have a side. The Northern Realms. We're out of its realms, don't you mean? Temeria and Edern are no more. The last game tested is The Witcher 3, with a running around test. We can see once again that higher RAM frequencies will in general bring a way better overall performance. Still, I like to always focus on the price performance sweet spot, which is, without a doubt, once again, the 2933 MHz RAM. RAM kits with those speeds are pretty cheap and will in generally will generally <laughs> overclock a bit, giving us even higher performance boost. As you can see, going from 2666 MHz to 2933 MHz gave you around 7 average FPS and 4 minimum FPS at 720p, making the game run close to 60 FPS, which in my opinion is really really damn great for this APU. Moving on. To close the benchmark phase, we have a synthetic benchmark that focuses on the CPU side, and even here we had a decent performance boost. The single core didn't increase that much of course, but something is better than nothing of course. As for the multi-core results, we had an improvement from 842 to 866, sorry, which is not that bad considering this is a CPU only benchmark. Let's move on to the conclusion. So guys, concluding, is it worth to get higher speed RAM for the Ryzen 5 2400G while using the integrated graphics? Well, in my opinion, yes and no. Depends on the kit you have, depends on, for example, the, the price of the kit. If you get a kit, a cheap kit, for example, 2933 MHz, like this Kingston HyperX Fury, and you get it pretty cheap, then go for it because you can overclock and it does matter on the performance of the integrated graphics. And for example, you can buy a lower end kit and buy, for example, a discrete GPU. Okay, it is more expensive, but that way you can play around with the prices, of course, and still have better performance because you have a discrete GPU. And that's basically it. In the end of the day, it comes to what you use your PC for. If you use your PC for, for example, light gaming, well, just grab a cheap 2933 MHz kit, do whatever you can with that kit and pray for God to, <laughs> for you to can indeed overclock the kit. Um, if you are using it for gaming, then just go to a discrete GPU. If you can't do it, buy better RAM now and later get a discrete GPU. 
that's all I have to say for now. Well guys, just want to say that maybe in the next week I will get a Ryzen 5 30... Spread. A Ryzen 5 3600, maybe still on my B, 350 streaks because I don't find and I can't find really the X570 motherboards, I can't find them on Portugal on any store. Uh, but I'll try and I'll buy one. I want to buy the um, X570 streaks, which is around 300 euros, I think, here in Portugal. I want to buy it, but still, if I can't buy it for now, I will buy the Ryzen 6 3600 first and then we'll put it on, a, on my B350 streaks. This is all because I will test firstly, right now, I will test the Ryzen 5 2600 and when the 3600 comes, I will test one versus another on a new video. So stay tuned for the next ones because they will be interesting. And well, there's not much more to say once again. Don't forget, hit like, subscribe, share the video because it really matters a lot. And also, stay here a bit more for the bloopers. See you in the next one. Hello guys, Ashen Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and today we have a video of DDR4... Um bocado lento. Hello guys, Ashen Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and today we have a video of DDR4 RAM Free... Quando digo... Quando digo have a video... Estás a ver? Quando eu digo I have a video, mandas-me logo, que eu já sabes okay. que eu vou falar disso a seguir. <laughs> Hello guys, Ashen Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco, and today we have a video of the... Didi... <coughs> Como é irmão é mais fácil. Ah, não faz mal, vamos lá chegar. <laughs>